Great. All right. Well, we can get started. Thank you all again for joining us. My name is Katie Friedman. I am the New York Ecological Restoration Program Manager here at Save the Sound, and I will be introducing our other uh, project teammates tonight. Um, and thank you again so much for joining us. So this Hutchinson River watershed plan, uh, the first phase of which covers Westchester County's portion of the watershed, um, is a project led by Save the Sound in partnership with Westchester County, and it's funded by the Long Island Sound Futures Fund administered by uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. And we have hired Biohabitats as our consultant for this project. So I'll just take this moment now to introduce our other um, folks on the phone, part of the project team, starting with uh, Nicole Davis at Save the Sound. You can say a quick hello. Hello, folks. I'm the Watershed Coordinator with Save the Sound. I'm excited to get this project started. Thanks, Nicole. Suzette LePayne from Westchester. Hi, I'm Suzette Lopane, and yeah, I'm a landscape architect with Westchester County, and uh, super excited. Everybody's joining in, and uh, really looking forward to um, hearing everybody's input in uh, in this project. Thanks. Great. And if we have anyone from um, NIFWF on the line, you're welcome to say hello. Same with Biohabitats. Hi, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Doms. I'm a water resource engineer in the Hudson River Bioregion Team Leader for Biohabitats. We're uh, super excited to work with Save the Sound, Westchester County, and all of you on this project. Thanks, Kevin. Great. Oh, oh please go ahead, Ellie. Yeah, I'm also joined by Ellie. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm happy to be here as well with Biohabitat. Thanks, Ellie. Happy to have you. Great. Save the Sound, for those who are not yet familiar with us, we are a regional environmental nonprofit who uh, work across both New York and Connecticut to protect uh, and preserve Long Island Sound. We have an ecological restoration team that Nicole and I are both on, <clears throat> and we've had over a decade of experience um, with hands-on ecological restoration projects ranging from green infrastructure like rain gardens and bioswales to coastal marsh restoration and living shorelines and watershed planning, uh, which brings us to uh, today's program. I started at Save the Sound about a year and a half ago to develop the New York Ecological Restoration Program, um, and I'm tasked with expanding all of this work that our team has done primarily in Connecticut throughout the New York region of the Long Island Sound. So that covers Westchester County, um, the Bronx, Queens, and the North Shore of Long Island. We play many roles um, on our team. We facilitate and convene communities around particular projects and issues. And we're also able to partner with municipalities and other nonprofits to move projects forward. Um, and our bread and butter is really serving as project managers from identifying a project, um, applying for funds, uh, implementing a project and monitoring. So we're really thrilled to be able to do this work with you on the Hutchinson River. We also have a water quality team um, that is really robust and has been in New York in our Larchmont large office for the past uh, seven or eight years. Sam Mark Bond is our clean water advocate who could not be here tonight, um, but he shared these slides with us. So our water quality team uh, works with citizen scientists to collect water quality samples from over 60 sites. Um, and those sites and samples are tested for bacteria, both Enterococci and E. coli. And then those samples and results are uh, scored based on New York and Connecticut swimming standards so that folks can understand whether or not their water waters in their backyards are, are swimmable. This sampling season is done between uh, June and August uh, with samples collected weekly. So we do have a crew going up the Hutchinson River every week. I believe it's every Wednesday um, collecting samples. And we have an annual training. So if you're interested in participating, um, you're welcome to contact us at the email on this slide, pollution at savethesound.org. On the Hutchinson River, our uh, team monitors these sites right here at Wilson's Woods Park, um, an outfall at Farrell Road, and then another uh, site uh, downstream at Glover Field. And as you can see, these red and orange colors indicate that samples routinely fail safe swimming criteria. Um, they also are um, 
taken to ensure that the community knows whether or not this water body is um, safe for swimming uh, and, and boating as well. The Unified Water Study is also a program run by Save the Sound. Our team developed standardized water quality monitoring protocols that are used by groups around the Long Island Sound in our bays and harbors. Um, and these groups will go out and collect uh, the following parameters, dissolved oxygen, water clarity, chlorophyll A levels, um, seaweeds, and oxygen saturation. Um, and those are all scored and given a grade for those different regions. So here we're looking at the Hutchinson River as it flows down through uh, East Chester Bay. The red area up, up top is the inner East Chester Bay um, sampling area. And then the uh, orange below is, is outer East Chester Bay. And you can see that in 2019, the inner East Chester Bay, um, where the Hutchinson River uh, flows, received a grade of F, um, and the outer East Chester Bay received a D grade. So the Hutchinson River is um, quite impaired, and I've been told by Peter Linderoth, our Director of Water Quality, that the inner East Chester Bay in particular uh, re receives the uh, lowest grades time and time again throughout the Long Island Sound. So we really are are tuned into how important this work is in uh, preparing a watershed plan. And with that, I'll pass it over to Nicole to walk us through our meeting agenda. Thanks, Katie. Um, no, this is, it's really exciting to get this group of people and just how many people have taken the time to show up tonight um, is really encouraging for the interest in the Hutchinson River watershed. Um, tonight, we're really going to focus on you know, setting the stage for the watershed plan. So we're going to start by talking about what a watershed plan is and why we're doing this process. Um, but then what we really want to do is hear from you, um, right? Figuring that the people on this call are who uses the watershed, who lives in the watershed and knows firsthand, you know, what the things they see on a regular basis or as the seasons change. So we're going to kind of set it up as a group discussion um, to talk about what's important in the watershed and what needs to be changed and approved. And then also, the whole idea is that this is going to be a robust community planning effort. So thinking about who needs to be at the table. Um, you figured we sent this list or this invite out to a large group of people um, to see what general interest there was. But if there's some groups or people that you know are working in this watershed and really feel like their voice should be heard as part of the planning process, getting that feedback. And then also looking to the people who have kind of a running knowledge of the watershed about what resources are available that we should make sure that we're looking at to get a big picture view of the watershed as a whole. Um, but before we really move into that, I wanted to talk about what a watershed is, because um, it sounds like there's a lot of interest in the Hutchinson River, but the reason that we're approaching it from the watershed perspective is really significant. So next slide, please, Katie. Um, so what is a watershed? A watershed is essentially any area of land that drains to a river or a stream or a lake or a pond. You know, even puddles have watershed. We know that water moves downhill, but when it rains, all that water picks up what's on the ground around it. And that's why watersheds are really significant. You know, a lot of times people think about their neighborhoods and what's going on in their neighborhood or on their street or what's going on within their town. But what's happening in a watershed is a lot bigger. Um, and knowing that we're all connected by these parcels of land um, that don't really pay attention to political boundaries is why why we look at things from a watershed scale. Um, and in some of the most successful watershed planning efforts that we've seen, it's where people from all over the watershed are represented and come together, but where those conversations start happening and people in the lower watershed and the middle watershed and the upper watershed start to realize that it's not about what each one of them is doing, but what they're all doing holistically. And that by supporting projects outside of and if their comfort zone or where they spend most of their time is what really brings the most success in protecting a river and protecting our watersheds. Next slide, please. Oh, and Katie's going to talk to you about what we know about the Hutchinson River. Sure. Thanks, Nicole. So the Hutchinson River watershed, again, all of the land uh, that drains to the Hutchinson River uh, spans over 12,000 acres. So this is between Scarsdale um, where, and then the Hutchinson River flows through. East Chester, New Rochelle, Pelham, Mount Vernon, and the Bronx. Um, this is a really um, 
uh, densely populated area that ranges from suburban um, to urban land use. And the river itself, um, as you can see in this map over here, uh, is impaired. It's listed on the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's list of impaired waters, their 3 or 3D list, um, for fecal coliform, so bacteria, oxygen demand, low oxygen, which is uh, really critical for aquatic life in the river, oil and grease found uh, on the surface, and garbage and refuse. Um, in that 303D listing, they have suspected sources of these impairments. And for the Hutchinson River, those suspected sources are urban stormwater runoff, which we are going to focus on um, today and throughout this planning process, and combined sewer overflows. When it rains, um, stormwater enters our sewer system and combines with sewage and tends to overflow when that system is overwhelmed with uh, a lot of volume. Um, so this is just a, a quick overview of the watershed itself. Uh, in this map, you can see, I'm going to move my mouse, the boundary between Westchester County and the Bronx is right about here. And so this first phase of the planning process is focused on this upper portion of the watershed, um, but we will be looking also at the lower uh, portion of the watershed, which Nicole will talk about. Um, and we're really glad to have all of you folks here today, whether you're from Westchester, the Bronx, um, or in the region. And then just one more kind of general informational bit before we really dive into the nitty gritty of watershed planning. Um, it's non or point source versus point source, I'm sorry, non-point source versus point source pollution. Um, and that's where um, there's a lot of misconceptions or confusion about what each of these things are. Um, and Katie already kind of mentioned that we're really gonna be focusing on stormwater or non-point source pollution. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to make sure everyone knew what a watershed was and kind of focusing on this concept that water flows downhill. So non-point solution or point source pollution is where anything that makes it to the river, not directly from its source. So when it rains, the water hits the ground and it all flows somewhere, whether it's to a storm drain, into your yard, into the street, um, directly into the stream, or you don't even know where it goes. And whatever that's picking up on the ground is what's called non-point source pollution. So it's anything that runoff is carrying to your rivers and streams. And point source pollution is really anything that's taken from an origin point and piped into the stream. Um, and for this planning process, we're really focusing on non-point source pollution. Um, and the main reason for that is, although point source pollution is a problem and a known problem, point sources are generally permitted, and we typically have a better idea of what those sources of pollution are. So there's already kind of controls in place. Um, and tracking down unknown point sources or on permitted point sources um, is definitely something we would recommend as an action to continue protecting the watershed. But we're really focusing on these broader sources of pollution that we don't have as concrete of an idea of where they're coming from or what they are. Um, and thinking about how we can intercept stormwater and the things that are carrying these unknown pollutants into our watersheds before we move on. Um, next slide, please, Katie. Um, and so for this watershed plan, um, the non-point source pollution is really what we're focusing on. And part of that is the process that we're following through um, state and federal recommendations. Um, and it's really this idea of we need to get a baseline of what we have. So we, it's an idea of bringing groups together that don't typically have conversations and looking at the watershed holistically. Um, I know most of the municipalities are doing a lot of great work, um, you know, protecting their land use. There's lots of great regulations on the books, some required, some that go above and beyond. But how do these all work together and how do these things intersect? So looking at what we know about the watershed to identify common goals that we're all working for. Um, so protecting water quality, is obviously the ultimate goal that we're looking at. But thinking bigger than that is how we can work together to achieve these goals. Um, and first of all is that Save the Sound in Westchester County are who got a grant from NIFWIF to do this work. And we brought on Biohabitats to work with us, um, who is really a well-known firm within this area that applies science and ecology um, and based, does science-based approach to conservation, um, which is one of the things we really like about working with them. So they're gonna help us with a lot of the technical aspects of the plan. Um, and we've collaborated with Biohabitats on several design and construction projects. Um, and they've also done a lot of planning projects within this area and have a good 
history of successful projects um, throughout the Northeast. But the main show goal of this watershed plan is to identify projects and recommendations that the watershed as a whole can support implementing to improve water quality. Um, and the types of projects that we typically look at coming out of these are green infrastructure or green stormwater infrastructure projects. And that's basically using the natural landscape or retrofitting um, an urbanized or impaired landscape to use or to infiltrate water and to create more of a natural system. And the reason that that tends to function is nature Nature knows what it's doing. And as human beings, we've spent a lot of time altering the landscape. So how do we bring things back to the way that it should function? You know, we spent a lot of time piping and straightening rivers. And we learned that all this does is it moves waste from one end to another quickly, but it causes flooding in areas and damming our rivers create scenic ponds and have drinking water benefits, but they also create a lot of upstream and downstream problems. So thinking through these problems holistically, again, and I'm gonna use that word a lot, um, just because it's really important to think about how all of these things do intersect. Um, the other benefit of green infrastructure is although flooding is not a major focal point of this plan, again, right, we're talking about non-point source pollution, flooding is something that happens in all of our urbanized community and green infrastructure and most of the solutions for non-point source pollution have a lot of co-benefits by minimizing both um, the inputs of water into our river, either the rate in which they're entering the water or the amount of water. So either, you know, volume and quality of water going in. So they do have the co-benefits of flooding. And we will talk about that a little um, but that again is not, it's not that it's not important, but it's not one of the focuses of this project. Um, next slide, please. Um, and what we're going to be using is it's what's called the EPA nine element or nine E process. Um, and the reason that this is the process we've chosen to follow is it's a good framework for how to put a solid community driven plan. Um, we've also had experience working with this protocol um, and other communities and have kind of tested the tried and true measures. But beyond that, by having an EPA approved nine element plan, so it will be reviewed at the end by both the state and the EPA, um, it opens up a lot of funding sources that wouldn't necessarily be available without a plan. And the reason that it does that is because this really shows that the projects in this plan have been well thought out. They're targeted on areas where we know there are pollutions and we know that we can have measurable benefits, which is a really important thing, right? You can't fix a problem if you don't know where you're starting. Um, and so by looking at the watershed in these smaller chunks, um, you know, we're gonna start at the headwaters in Westchester County and bring it down to the mouth of the river. Um, it gives us the opportunity to look both large scale and small scale to find benefits. And I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this at the beginning when I was talking about kind of the goals of the watershed plan and its objectives. Um, Katie had already kind of touched on, we're doing this project in two phases. And what's really exciting about this is we had originally put this forward uh, because Hutchinson River watershed is a really good sized watershed. So how do we break it down into bite-sized pieces that we can really take the time to dive into? And the county line seemed to be, you know, a good breaking point for the watershed. So we started with what we were calling phase one is to just look at Westchester County um, with the idea that we would eventually find funding and move into phase two, which would look at the Bronx. Um, and we were really lucky to kind of secure funding in a manner that's going to dovetail that process. So the focus of the watershed planning process that we're kicking off today will focus specifically on Westchester County, um, but then we'll be able to move into phase two kind of cohesively within this process. So we'll be able to look at the whole watershed and not in these two kind of county line chunks. Um, and one of the methods we're going to use um, beyond just having these greater community conversations, which will happen throughout the watershed planning process, um, we've put together, or biohabitats, I should say, is put together an interactive input map, which is an opportunity for people to kind of identify places they like in the watershed, um, places where they know there's a problem, or just kind of things that we should be aware of. Um, and I'll, we're still working on getting the webpage for the watershed plan off the ground, but it will be hosted at www.savethesound.org slash hutch plan. Um, and what this um, input map will do is it's got a set of or of instructions. So it'll tell you kind of how to use this. So don't feel like you need to write down or take notes on this. It's a pretty user-friendly interface. Um, but what it does is it has a map of the whole watershed um, that you can zoom into. And you can zoom into an even finer scale than this all the way down to street level where you can drop a pin. Um, and then once you've dropped that pin, 
there's a little bit of information that's asked of you, um, you know, your name, your or your name and your email address. And the reason that we're asking for both of those is, first of all, just to verify that you're a human being and not a robot who's trying to mess with our data. But second, that way we have contact information if we wanna follow up with any questions or um, need any additional information or think that you can help us out with a little more clarity on that. Um, and then it asks if you live, work and play in the watershed. And it's not that we're trying to track anyone's movements, but it's really trying to get the idea of who's using this watershed and who thinks that it's important um, and how people are interacting with the landscape. Um, and there's some more questions along those lines, you know, specifically asking what towns. And the other thing that that tool will help us do is if everyone from New Rochelle has filled in all of these bubbles, but we really have no information from Mount Vernon or no information from people living in Scarsdale, it means that we need to do a little bit more outreach in those areas just to make sure that we're getting a broader picture of what's going on within the watershed. And then you have the opportunity to kind of talk about this point that you've dropped on the map, whether it's an area of value, you know, something good that you really think should be celebrated within the watershed or an area of concern, you know, something that you, you know is a problem, but you don't really know what to do about it um, or something that you're worried about becoming a bigger problem. And then there's a drop down box with kind to kind of categorize what it is. Like for an area of value, is it a recreation area? Is it somewhere that just has aesthetic value? Um, is it a great place to paddle or walk um, or other, which also gives you the opportunity to add comments in? And if it's an area of concern, um, some of the, the things that are there, is it an area of flooding? Is it an area where the water regularly smells bad? Um, is it an area that you notice a lot of erosion um, or just something that you it doesn't feel right to you? You know, this area doesn't seem to function in the same way that other parts of the river do. And then there's an opportunity for you to put a short description about what's going on or what you want us to know about that site, and then to upload a photo or a file with additional information. Um, and just putting it out there that um, a picture speaks a thousand words, and that really is true. So if you have photos, the more photos we have of this, not only is it helpful for the planning process, but if as we're kind of seeing these same ideas over and over again, it makes it easier for us to take this and to consideration and figure out how to make a recommendation around these items and these problem areas or these really great things within our watershed. Um, and so here we are today in September of 2022, kicking off the Westchester County phase one portion of the Hutchinson River watershed plan. Um, and so the first step of what we're gonna do is paint a picture of what the watershed is, you know, what it looks like today, what we know about the history of the watershed, and then kind of start that conversation around what we want it to look like in the future. Um, and so the first step of that is bringing all of you together today to start that conversation and to identify um, stakeholders that should be involved and where we should really be looking for resources. And then we'll save the sound, Westchester County and Biohabitats are gonna start digging through all of that information um, and really kind of putting the data together um, so that we have a strong scientifically supported baseline assessment of the watershed. Um, and the one thing that we are gonna ask of people in this meeting and others who are unable to join today is we're gonna be forming a steering committee, which is essentially a group of representatives or stakeholders within the watershed who wanna be more deeply involved in the watershed plan. You know, there's opportunities to be more broadly involved and just be informed but for people who really want more information or really wanna have their voice in the watershed planning process. Um, we're gonna ask people to join a steering committee that'll meet every other month. Um, throughout the planning process. Um, so we'll probably come back together in November to start talking about the draft ideas and the things that we found in the baseline assessment and vet them with these people on the steering committee who are more, who are really vested in this watershed and know it really well. Um, and then we'll present this information publicly in December um, to kind of give the bigger community an opportunity to talk about um, what they see in this baseline assessment, if there was anything that was missed, and to learn more about you know, where we're taking this planning process. And then the next step is to kind of look at improvement opportunities. So as part of the baseline assessment, we'll start looking at where the problem areas are in the watershed. Um, and that'll be based on land use, on water quality data, and then information from reports and studies that are available and from the municipalities and the county. Um, and we'll use that to start to generate ideas of how we can start to address those projects to improve water quality within the watershed. Um, and we'll bring kind of a draft 
lists their ideas for improvement opportunities back to the steering committee um, to think about, you know, does this list of projects make sense to you? Is there anywhere else that we should be looking? Or is there anywhere else or any of these projects just way off base, you know, that it's an area that on paper, it may look like it's problematic, but we know that it's not problematic and that you should really kind of spend some time in the field. And then our team um, will go out in the field and actually spend time in the watershed, you know, walking around, poking our heads on properties and in the river and outside the river um, to really get a sense of what's going on in the watershed. And then we'll put all of that together in one big comprehensive memo and description of a watershed plan. And the way that we're doing it for the Hutchinson River watershed, as I've already said, is in two phases. So in um, the summer of 2023 is when we're really going to kind of take all of this information and wrap it up into a really pretty package and say, this is what we've seen. And we'll submit it to this group and the general public and ask them to look at it and give us any comments that they may have. Um, and then we will say, Westchester County, this is essentially what your watershed plan is going to look like for the Hutchinson River. Um, and then we'll start doing the same process in the Bronx. And there will probably be a little bit of overlap. We're still working out um, kind of the funding nuances for phase two, we were really lucky that um, Assemblyman Benedetto was able to secure funding for the West or for the, the Bronx portion of the watershed. Um, so as soon as we get the funding secured and in place, we're going to start the process of doing that. So the work within Westchester and the Bronx can kind of dovetail. Um, and so we'll set that schedule up once we kind of know when we can really start the work in earnest. But we are currently expected to complete phase two of that plan in July 2024. So it'll be about a year after and we'll wrap all of that up into one big plan for the full watershed. And then we'll all come back together again and celebrate all of this work. Um, and really the most exciting part about all of this, it's not so much the celebration. You know, we've had pizza parties and bus tours and celebration events, which are all really great, but it's when we can actually move on from the planning process and actually start doing projects is when things get really exciting. Um, so it takes a little while to get to that point and a, honestly, a lot of work and cooperation and conversations, but this is also really an important time to start building those partnerships and thinking about how we can all work together towards the common goal of protecting water quality. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, that was great. And I just want to give kudos to Nicole. She is sick um, and powering through this tonight. So thank you so much. You're doing a fantastic job. Um, so the this um, is a moment where we're going to open up the floor for any questions you have so far on the watershed planning process, making sure that you have a good handle on what a watershed is itself, um, what a watershed plan uh, entails, um, and you know the schedule and tasks within this particular project. After this, we're going to get into our group discussion using an interactive whiteboard called Jamboard, but wanted to give a couple minutes now if there's any questions. Maybe, Nicole, you can look in the chat, and folks are also welcome to unmute themselves. I have a question. Yes. Um, what what will the approval, will there be an official approval of the plan and by who? That's a great question. And yes, there will be. Um, so both New York DEC and the EPA will be formally approving the um, the watershed plan. And but, so using the nine element process, the state has put together essentially a checklist for um, the EPA nine element process. And so it basically says, these are all the things you should be addressing in the plan and give suggestions on how to do it. Um, and so the idea is that we'll submit that um, in the summer of 2020 to be approved by the EPA and the New York State DEC. But the idea is that both of those organizations are going to be involved in the planning process. And I'll be kind of reviewing and commenting on the documents that were put in together and the things that we're looking at within the watershed planning process. Um, so that by the time we kind of wrap up phase one, the Westchester County portion, although it won't be formally um, uh, reviewed at that time, um, we'll know that it is on track and likely to be approved by both those entities. And then um, we'll do the same thing through the Bronx. You know, it's a process where we try to involve all the partners and provide, give up everyone an opportunity to provide comments all the way through. So at the end of the planning process, there's no surprises. Um, and then we have a couple 
questions in the chat. Um, who do you call about broken and leaky sewer pipes um, as point to or non-point source pollution? So leaky sewer pipes are definitely point source pollution. Um, so I think the best person to get a hold of right now is first I would call um, your municipality um, is where I would start with that. And if you're not getting a response from them, um, the sound keeper, um, Katie had put in an email address for pollution at Save the Sound, which goes to both our water quality team and the sound keeper who can go out and collect data. And that's how a lot of the watchdogging efforts at Save the Sound does um, happens is people let us know that there's problem areas and they're not getting responses. Um, there's also a question about how many CSOs are on the hutch. I'm and just going to add, sorry to interrupt Nicole for um, yeah. the leak, the leaks. Um, if you also suspect a spill of any sort on the Hutchinson River or any water body in New York State, um, you should call the, the DEC um, spill hotline, which we can always provide that information to you. Yep. And there's also a question about um, fish passage and spawning habitat and how we're going to look at that as part of the planning process. Um, and that is where having Katie and Suzette involved in this planning process is a huge advantage because both of them are already kind of starting to look at fish passage um, within the county, not just within the Hutchinson River. Um, and so although we will probably look at where dams are located. Um, fish passage and spawning is not a priority or a goal of this plan, but if through these conversations, it sounds like it's really a priority within the community, um, then we'll definitely make some general recommendations around there, or provide some resources. Um, and then there's one more, before I go through the board, I'm sorry, are there any more questions that people wanna ask? I see there's a hand up, Paul. You're welcome to unmute. Um, yeah, so the question I had was in regards to the watershed plan. Has there been any uh, research done in terms of the impact of road salt and the calcium and magnesium that's found and alternatives um, to impact, like, I guess, the watershed? Um, I know that those magnesium, calcium do have an impact in facilitating algae blooms that impact marine life. Um, has any of that, you know, towards the alternatives that municipalities along the watershed could use? I don't know if it's beet juice or what are, this, are the alternatives that are out there that's developing from the scientific community, but um, has any of those, um, has any research been done like that that could be shared with some of the departments of public works that are along the, the watershed for municipalities or municipal governments? There has definitely been a lot of research, and I know um, in Connecticut, there's a, a couple of universities that are looking at kind of salt transport both within groundwater and surface water within some of our smaller watersheds. Um, I don't have the resources handy right now, but that is something we can definitely make note of. Um, and I think it's definitely, it's a bigger conversation in the Northeast that is gonna be happening a lot more. Um, so I'm glad to think that you're already thinking about that, Paul. Thanks, Paul. We have a hand up from Lewis. Good to see you here. Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, I put in a couple of things on the chat, so I, I guess I should repeat them. Uh, the water quality testing, are you posting them for public view and where? Yes, the um, water quality results are posted every Friday on our website. There's a link in the slide, um, and I can put that link in the chat um, uh, during this presentation. And that'll show year-to-year uh, -year results so that we can see uh, uh, how things change over time. Yep, exactly. Both for our bacteria monitoring and for our unified water study. Right. And then my other question, oh, two more questions. The other one was about the CSOs. Uh, how many are on the Westchester? Uh -huh. On the uh, creek? Um, so Westchester County um, does not have a combined sewer system, um, but that's a great question for the Bronx portion. I don't have that number off the top of my head. And finally, uh, are you going to be doing uh, community uh, presentations? Absolutely. So this is our first one. Um, today's goal is really to let folks know that this planning process is happening and get um, some initial feedback. But then we're going to have um, three public meetings throughout the planning process. And we'll also, in addition to that, um, be offering opportunities for folks to get out into the Hutchinson River through what are called stream walks, um, which is what it sounds like getting into the river, which Nicole will talk about as a next step towards the end of the presentation. And have you looked at the idea of uh, uh, public uh, canoeing, uh, environmental uh, discussions on the water? Um, that would be great and a lot of fun. So yes, we should talk about that. 
Thanks. I, I also want to um, give a shout out to to the Hutchinson River Restoration Project, who does um, hold a lot of public engagement events throughout the Hutchinson River. So we'll be partnering um, closely with them throughout this project too, particularly on outreach. Any other questions? There is just one in the chat that I wanted to address because I think it's a great question is when do you think the earliest the community could do boots on the ground things like community science or tree planting? Um, and so this we're looking at this to be a two year long um, planning process, but just because we're in the middle of a planning process does not mean that we can start doing projects. Um, and I don't want that to discourage anyone um, and especially things like community science and tree planting and you know, education and outreach are things that can happen all the way through the planning process and really just support it. So I think as projects are identified, um, it would be great to see them. And it also kind of helps um, alleviate what I like to call planning fatigue, kind of that idea that we've talked about this for so long. When can we actually do something? So to provide opportunities, even like canoeing, to actually get in the watershed and get our feet dirty and our hands wet. Great. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more. If not, I'll go on to our next slide. Oh, Suzette, I see you've just unmuted. Yeah, yeah, there was a question. Um, you know, uh, two of the lakes in the Hutch and Westchester, Wilson's Woods and Pelham Lake and Twin Lakes lie entirely within county parks. Is Westchester County government involved in this process? Yes, yes, we are. Um, we are going to be um, participating in, in this uh, watershed plan, and we're going to be participating in terms of implementation as well. So yes, we, we are involved and um, the county, you know, is made up of many different departments. Um, parks fall under uh, Westchester County Parks and they will be involved as well. Thanks, Suzette. Yes, for those who weren't here at the very beginning, this project is a, a partnership between Save the Sound and Westchester County. Um, so that's great. Thank you, Suzette. All right. Um, we are entering time for a group discussion. So I am going to uh, eventually share my screen with uh, a Jamboard. Um, maybe Suzette, uh, sorry, Nicole, you could enter that link into the chat. So we are going to um, walk through a few different questions to get, get our minds moving. Um, one category is um, priorities within the watershed. So what's important to you? What are some things you'd like to change? Um, what would you like to see in the watershed plan itself? What would be most helpful um, to all of you? And then as we um, continue to engage stakeholders in the community, we wanna um, get a sense from you what information is already available so that we're not being duplicative and so that we can also incorporate Incorporate existing information into this plan to inform it. Um, who else should should be here? Who's missing from the room? Um, we want to make sure that we're reaching as many folks as possible. Um, and then we'll talk about what are some effective outreach strategies. So uh, we'll have a, um, a whiteboard for each of these questions, and I'll walk you through how we can add sticky notes to that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment and pull up our Jamboard. Um, so bear with me and you're welcome to um, open the um, Jamboard on your own computer. It's in the chat. Um, so take a moment to pull that up. And I will share my screen with you. So we're asking all of you to have this open on your own computer so that you can um, add sticky notes. So here we are. Um, here's our whiteboard page. I hope that you can have this up on your own screen. Um, in order to add a sticky note, you're gonna move your mouse over here to this little sticky note icon. It's right below the mouse icon. Click on it. You can change your colors to whatever is your favorite um, and then type in it and click save. You can click out of the box and then you can actually click on the box, move it around. You can make it bigger, smaller. Um, you can edit it if you um, wanted to change something. If you wanted to start over, you can delete it. Um, so please feel free to start adding stickies to this first page. Our question that we're posing to you is, what is important to you within the Hutchinson River watershed? And for each of these uh, questions, we have examples. So maybe it's um, recreating on the hutch through kayaking. Um, maybe there's a particular park or a spot along the river um, that's important to you. Um, maybe you're interested in water quality. I see some great stickies coming in. Open space, green space, continuous hiking um, and walking trails. Um, so please continue to, to populate this. And if you are calling in, 
um, or are not able to use Jamboard for whatever reason, you are encouraged to enter your, um, your thoughts into the chat um, and Nicole or I will type them for you and make a sticky note for you. And you're also welcome to unmute um, and share your thoughts and Nicole and I will get those into sticky notes. Um, so thank you so much for those already already in there. Um, and you're welcome to add more than one. Um, you know, any and all thoughts are welcome. And we'll give about um, a, a few minutes for each of these, um, each of these uh, Jamboard questions. I see healthy habitat for migratory striped bass. Nice. A lot of clean water, water quality, visible and accessible river access. Let's see oyster populations. We have folks interested in reservoir number one, also known as Lake Innisfree. Restored floodplains for flood mitigation. That's great. And you'll see me moving these so that you can see the question as folks continue to brainstorm. And it's okay to overlap with other stickies. <laughs> the more, the more, the better. Biodiversity, great. And we will be keeping this um, Jamboard live. So if something comes to mind after this, this meeting or if we're on the next slide and you wanna um, keep thinking about this one, you're welcome to continue to populate it. Public access, great. Marsh protection. I'm seeing more habitat. Love uh, seeing American eel represented on the sticky board. The only catadromous fish species in North America. <laughs> Hiking, great. Nice and more fish passage, excellent. All right, I think we'll move on to our next Jamboard, which I'm going to pass over to Nicole, but feel free to continue populating this one as well. Great. And the next question is really thinking about how you want to use the watershed in the future. Um, so if there's anything that you know that you would like to see changed or improved and ideas on how you want to see that happen. I know uh, I saw river access came up a lot as to what's important to you. So like if there were any ideas around how you'd like to see river access improved or um, if you know that there's not enough connectivity or parks, you know, and you or you wanna see more green space or maybe you think there's too many trees, you know, there is no wrong answer. So just thinking about how you wanna be able to use the watershed in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. And again, if you aren't able to use Jamboard, I will be checking the chat and copying and pasting your responses and you're welcome to unmute as well. I love that idea of improved knowledge and education around the river. Um, I think that's so important. I think so many people um, don't always see a river as um, an asset within their community. Sometimes it's just something that's there that if you're not on it all the time, you don't realize it's there. Uh, and stormwater management is one that is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, the one that was just popped up about accessing viewing spots south of Sanford Boulevard. Um, I'm curious if people are feel like the river is a resource within their community. Is it something that's highly visible um, where you live or where you are by the river most of the time, or is it something you really have to seek out? Um,
And again, like Katie said, we're going to have this um, this board live for a little bit, both tonight and after the meeting. So feel free to come back and populate it as you see fit. Um, and we'll also send up a follow up of notes. Um, we have everyone's email address um, from when they registered. So we'll send it out and we'll send the link in the recording so you can go back to these resources um, as you're thinking about it. Because so I know sometimes on the spot or you leave a meeting and you think about something as soon as you walk away. Oh, in the chat, I like that, more community ownership. Right, why don't we take just a few more seconds here? All right, and why don't we move on to the next one? Great. All right, so what do you want to see in the Hutchinson River Watershed Plan? So this will be a document. Um, it will contain the you know summary of the existing conditions of the Hutchinson River Watershed from that watershed baseline assessment. Um, it will also include um, recommendations and particular projects. Um, we will have a, a pollution load model um, that biohabitats will be running, um, but we really want to hear from you what is helpful um, as folks in the community, as practitioners, as um, municipal leaders and staff. Um, when, you know, at the end of this project, when we have a plan and you open it up, um, what is most helpful for you, whether that's a list of projects, if it's cost estimates, if it's, um, you know, maps showing where different types of projects um, could be cited, uh, whatever is helpful, we'd love to hear from you. And Nicole will put in um, anything in the chat. Uh, you're also welcome to unmute. If there's watershed plans that you've been a part of in the past um, and have some good lessons learned from that process, you're welcome to share them here. I like the acknowledgement of climate change and um, adaptation and mitigation practices. That's great. Nice educational resources for communities. I'll try to read these as they come in for folks on the phone. Um, nice, yes, one pagers for um, community, uh, for priority projects. Those are always helpful, especially when you're seeking funding to implement projects. Mm -hmm. A timeline of what will be done and who takes responsibility and who will be the lead more plantings of marshland and fewer industrial overflows into the river. Great. We have measures to address hydrologic resilience. So changes in precipitation intensity. Um, oh, this is a great one. Equitable blame for the river's problems. Um, so we're excited to be able to work uh, collaboratively across municipalities through this process. Yeah, um, can I just like quickly speak on that? Please. Yeah, so, um, you know, like Mount Vernon gets a lot of the blame for what's wrong with the Hutchinson River. And, you know, we all know the sewers aren't a horrible thing to disrepair, but I just want to make sure that the science supports that and that, you know, all municipalities go through the same research process because, you know, Mount Vernon is a city that's majority BIPOC. Black, Indigenous, people of color. And, you know, some, I just wanna, you no, know, as a resident, I just wanna make sure that it's not the only city being blamed for the problems, you know? Thank you, Amelia. That's an excellent point. Just to Amelia's point, um, so one of the ways that we try to do that throughout the planning process is not looking at the municipalities within the watershed, but looking at the river itself and the tributaries that go into the river and kind of breaking the river up into smaller pieces and looking at land use and potential pollution inputs from all of these kind of smaller sub watersheds so that we're looking at 
what's going into the river where, not necessarily who's putting it in, if that makes sense. So not pointing the finger at this municipality is doing this wrong, but looking at where in the watershed we can have the most impact. And then try to have projects distributed throughout the watershed. Right. Yep, we have equitable solutions so that all communities benefit from improved access, water quality, increased public awareness of the river. That's great. And we'll give a couple more moments. This one that says in, I think I'm going to delete for now. You're welcome to re, re sticky your thoughts. Removal of old barges and other eyesores. Great. All right, Nicole, how do you feel about going to the next one? Okay, thank you all so much. And feel free to continue to populate this as we go. All right. Yes. And this is kind of now an opportunity to think about what you know has been done. You know, are there any studies that you're aware of in the watershed? You know, college students, high school students that have been doing research. Um, we will obviously be looking at all of the comprehensive plans of development, both for the municipalities and the county. Um, but beyond there, any sort of land use studies or land use data or big construction projects um, that you know of are probably likely to happen in the next five or 10 years or um, large parcels of land where you think that development is going to happen, um, you know, kind of thinking about what information we may not be thinking of using as part of this planning process. Um, you know, newspaper articles are also a good thing if you have kind of some historic record um, or know of historians that we should be talking to or people that we should be talking to. Um, and in the chat, there's a question about how um, industrial areas in the lower section of the Hutch and Mount Vernon will be addressed in the plan. Um, and so it, there are known problems with industry, especially in the lower part of the, the watershed, um, but we will be focusing on stormwater um, and non-point source pollutions as part of this planning process. So I'm not saying that this is not a problem and that turbidio, turbidity isn't something that we'll be thinking of as a problem going through all of this, um, but we may not be looking at specific industrial areas, um, but maybe the stormwater associated with those um, if they're not functioning the way that we would expect them to be permitted. I mean, someone has put in their historic Army Corps reports. Um, are there, I, just directly kind of thinking about this, do you know of any specific ones? We'll definitely look through um, and see what we can find, but is there one specifically um, that you were thinking of? Um, I found it a few years ago by accident. I was doing some personal research on the Hutchinson River because it's kind of like my thing, I guess. Um, and I found it through worldcat.org. Um, Cool. Basically, uh, and I think it was from the 1960s or the 1970s, but it talks about flood risk cool. along the Hutchinson River. I can dig through my records and try to find it and send it to you guys. Um, yeah, if you have, that would be great. Um, we can also look through it too, though, if you can't find it. Um, but yeah, please feel free to pass on any information that you think will be helpful. And we'll have our contact information in at the end. Awesome. Um, and Anne Keenan has her hand raised. Yes, hi. I, I, you know, I, I referenced Mount Vernon before only because I had seen that they, I recently noticed they had funding um, for their sewer structures there. So I was just wondering how that would impact, you know, what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, and as part of this, we're going to have conversations with each municipality, um, kind of what they're working on, what they're working towards related to the river. Um, so all of that information will hopefully kind of feed what we're looking at. Thanks for the clarification, Anne. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, I heard what you said about um, not looking at uh, specific industrial users, but 
if if um, you do get information about specific point sources um, of pollution, and they do um, relate to a particular industrial user, not that I know of any, um, would that uh, perhaps generate a, a change in or an additional focus for the plan? Or would you just put that aside for a later time? How would that be addressed? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, and it's a little bit complicated. Um, so we really do have a very definitive scope for this project. And unfortunately, what it comes down to is, you know, funding and what we committed to our funder to doing. Um, but that does not mean that that type of information isn't important. So it's not like we're just going to sit on it and say this isn't part of the plan. So we're not going to look at it. Um, so it's definitely something we'll share with the county or the municipality or um, another leg of Save the Sound who's kind of working in that area. Yep, and just to, to piggyback off of that, our water quality team um, that I talked a bit about before who samples um, outfalls and the river channel for bacteria, looks for dissolved oxygen and all those other parameters, they are interested and focused on <clears throat> both non-point source and point source pollution. Um, so if any of that comes up throughout, excuse me, <clears throat> the planning process, um, that is definitely going to be incorporated into our work at Save the Sound, um, and we'll be communicating that with with um, you know landowners. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And somebody put in the chat um, a comment about the creation of um, aggregated neighborhood associations um, to fill, facilitate community education. Um, and that is something that I would turn back to this group. Um, neighborhood associations are one that it can be really hard to kind of pinpoint who the best person in a neighborhood is to talk to. Um, so if you are part of a neighborhood association or you know who a leader in a specific neighborhood is that you think would be interested in this planning process or should be part of the conversation, um, it would be great if you could share their information or share a way that we could get a, um, get in touch with these groups or find more information on them because um, it does tend to be very specific to each community. Um, and again, we'll put our contact information at the end of the presentation. So feel free to reach out to us afterwards if you have any of that information. I see yeah. Paul. Oh, that was, yes. Yeah, that was that was me. I could provide that listing for New Rochelle. Um, like I'm part of the, Thank um, you. my neighbor is like Glenwood Lake. I could provide our president and there's several others along like French Ridge and New Rochelle. And I could get a list of presidents. I think it'll be great because we had to kind of uh, um, get the information out um, to the people that haven't taken an environmental science course before. Awesome. No, I think that's great. Thanks for that. Because um, I find some of those neighborhood associations are the best people to start those conversations with. And that um, leads in very nicely to our next uh, slide, our second to last slide here. So who should be involved in the planning process? Who's not already here in the room? Um, this can be, you know, a particular nonprofit you know of. It could be a, um, a resident um, or a, a neighborhood in particular that's impacted by the Hutchinson River um, and, and the watershed itself. Uh, maybe local conservation commissions or city councilors, um, please feel free to, to brainstorm that and add um, any ideas in the chat. And to the board, of course. I see municipal staff and elected, for elected officials from all communities in the watershed. We have that question up here too. Great, Department of Transportation, folks at the city and state level. I love that one, churches and community centers. Yep, places of worship. And to give you, um, heads up of our, the next and final question is going to be about outreach strategies. So how do we reach these folks? 
um, effectively. Oh, great. I see the Mount Vernon um, Tree Committee and um, Boys and Girls Club. So the Mount Vernon Boys and Gr Girls Club has gone out with Save the Sound um, a couple of years, including this year, to do benthic macro and vertebrate sampling in the Hutchinson River. And we'll be working with them to um, get back out into the hutch throughout this planning process. It's great. Hudson Valley Stream Conservancy. Thank you, Gareth, for joining us today. Leave a couple more moments. Yes, yeah, students, that's great. And if there are any local, um, maybe boating groups or, um, you know, fishing. Um, clubs SUNY purchase nice environmental studies that's great yep senior project ideas oh fantastic thank you federated conservationists um be able to direct this group to local leaders fantastic <laughs> And again, you're welcome to unmute if you have ideas but aren't able to type them up. All right, some specific professors, YMCAs, great. There are a couple of organizations on City Island that need to be included in this, the Hutchinson River Restoration Project and yes. the City Island Oyster Reef, and also Riverkeeper, which has placed a lawsuit against one of the scrap dealers on the river get them involved also. They are involved. Great. Thanks for that, Barbara. Nice, Delicious. Great, yes, John Waldman from Queens College. Trust for public land, excellent. Salty fly rotters, nice. One, right. of the, one of the towns that's most affected by the hutch, although nobody seems to understand this, is um, Douglaston. And I wonder if there are any groups there. I don't know anyone there, but um, I think somebody should go after the town. Right. In Queens. And we um, see the sound actually has a living shoreline project in Douglas Manor. Um, and we tend to um, attend some of the Douglas and Civic Association meetings. So that's a great, great one. Thanks, Barbara. All right. I don't see many more coming in, but again, please feel free to continue to add. And we'll go to our last slide. Thanks. And this is one that, you know, we're still trying to navigate. I mean, we're now in, it's now been two years since things really went virtual. Um, and I find every community and every group has found different strategies that work best for them. So really thinking about locally, what has worked best for you um, as far as outreach methods? You know, is it flyers and mail or social media posts, or is there another um, platform that really seems to resonate within your community or just sending it to the municipalities and having them get the information out that way or websites? Um, regular media, any ideas that you've seen being successful? Um, I know even just kind of kicking off a meeting virtual, um, it's great because it opens the door for a lot of people who can't always attend evening meetings, but it is a definitely a different conversation. So how do we make sure that we're reaching the most people? And when we are coming together, that we're able to get the most amount of information um, shared between us. 
I think, newsletters to different groups, to their memberships, and also uh, articles in local newspapers uh, explaining, perhaps even in great detail, what some of the issues are, which you cannot do in a flyer. Yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing, too, that we've been playing with as far as outreach goes, um, there's a lot of information that's being shared right now, um, but is there interest in doing things that are more active and getting us to the river or near the river um, to kind of really engage people with the river itself, not just talking about it as part of a planning process? Or I think, oh. Go ahead, I think, oh, I think what would be fun for community members is nature journaling. Um, there, you know, there are a few safe, easy access points to the hutch, like let's say Wilson's Woods Park and having a nature journaling event um, where people just sit down, they're given watercolor paper, watercolor paints, pens, and they just observe the river. Um, it can be fun for all ages. And I think it would be a good way to get people just like appreciative of the river to realize that it's more than just a parkway. Yeah, I think that's a really fun idea. Um, and that really is what a lot of this is, right? So much of it is about the planning process, but it's also getting people to connect to the river um, and maybe getting people who wouldn't normally want to come to a planning meeting to sit down and observe the river and say, wow, this is important and get them involved. So I really like that idea um, and kind of more abstract thoughts, I think are really encouraged as part of this. Um, we all go to Zoom meetings a lot. So what are some more creative ways we can really reach people? Mm -hmm. I like that there's a lot of interest in um, boating on the river. I heard canoes earlier too. Yeah, and trivia and stories for volunteers and tabling. Um, do most of the communities have um, regular farmers markets? Um, yes, I believe the Hutchinson River Restoration Project has been tabling at um, several several spots. Um, cool. Uh, so yes. Excuse me. And I really love, I have another page of, Zamb or of Jamboard opened up on my computer um, that I just hadn't moved yet. And there's people filling things in on one screen and on my other screen, there's different people filling stuff in here. So there's a lot of activity going on right now. And a shout out to uh, the, the Bronx River Alliance who hosted um, a, a stakeholder meeting for the Bronx River Watershed Plan who used Jamboard in this way. So I thought that was great and I'm glad we're able to use it with you all. Yeah, and school programs are really a great way, um, especially engaging kids in the river and getting them to think about it differently than just a body of water. Um, we've had a lot of great experiences getting kids out in the river who had never really walked in a river before, which is always a lot of fun. Someone put in there um, a festival celebrating the Hutch, um, which makes me wonder, are there any regular festivals that happen throughout these communities that we could piggyback on or that having um, information about the watershed plan would be um, beneficial? Could... There's Mount Vernon City Fest that just happened August 27th. Um, I'm new to Mount Vernon. Um, but I imagine it's annual. Thanks. 
Yes, it is annual. We're, it, we're having a festival, the City Island Oyster Reef on October 1st. And uh, we'd love for information to get out about the Hutchinson Watershed Project. Great. That's great, Sally. I'm glad Sam will be joining for that. Exactly. There's a Wilson's Woods Park advocacy group that organized an appreciation walk there a few years ago. And that uh, format could be easily adapted to focusing directly on the river. Great. You all can let me know if I'm misspelling anything. Um, nice, local newspapers, got that one, great. And is the Wilson's Woods um, Association someone we should be thinking about kind of trying to tie into it with the planning process? Uh, BCEQ, remember when you get into the box, does an annual river festival. Nice, okay. Yes, the, the Wilson's Woods group uh, is an informal network. It's not uh, 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 a 501c3 or anything as organized as that, but it has a rather extensive um, email list uh, that's been used primarily to bring people to Wilson's Woods uh, for, uh, for cleanup sponsored by the uh, Westchester Parks Foundation. Great, that's, um, those are really great groups to tap into. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, and as far as the conversation about outreach strategies or um, or even who should be involved, you know, if your neighbor Benny talks to 900 people a day, so he's someone we should really get the word to so he can share it to this, you know, the people he's talking to. I mean, if that's an effective outreach strategy in your community, it's definitely something that we should be tapping into. Um, and another watershed that we did, barber shops were really a great way to get the word out um, and to get people to kind of participate in um, cleanup events and things within the watershed. Great. All right, this is our last um, slide. The next one just says, thank you. Um, but we do have more of our um, presentation. So I will stop sharing my screen, but you know, keep this jam board up and continue to add to it to your heart's content. Um, one moment. And thanks for sticking with us. Okay. Uh, are you going to talk about the process after this is all over? You're going to put together all these ideas and send them out to us? Yeah, yes. that those are the plans. Um, so the idea is that after tonight, um, Katie and Suzette and I will kind of take a step back and look at all these ideas that were brought together. Um, and we'll share them also with biohabitats um, who will be part of the conversation as well. And we're kind of going to use them to generate a couple different lists. The first being, you know, who do we really need to spend our time reaching out to um, to make sure that the watershed as a whole is well represented um, during out the planning process. Um, and then we'll take into consideration all the strategies we're recommended and see what we can incorporate. Um, and then with the other slides, it's a good starting point for where we can get um, information. Um, and so we'll start trying to track down some of the reports and studies that were mentioned. And again, feel free to share any of them with us if you have them. Um, and then the other kind of bits of information are what we're going to kind of use to start shaping kind of goals and priorities throughout the watershed plan. Um, this is really kind of a peek into what people think are important. Um, you know, this isn't about what Save the Sound or Westchester County or Biohabitats thinks is important within the Hutchinson River watershed, right? At the end of the day, this is a plan that's meant to be used by the community. Um, and hopefully we're all kind of in the same frame of reference about what we think is important, but we'll use that to kind of step forward these goals and then we'll work with the steering committee to vet that. So we'll send out kind of notes from today um, and kind of how we've, we've digested the Jamboard um, will be part of that. Uh, um, that's great. Yeah, which brings us, it's a perfect segue, so thank you, into the next steps. Um, 
So beyond digesting everything from the meeting and sharing it back out with people, um, and just one more thing on that, it's also um, an opportunity. If we missed anything or something didn't come up at the meeting, all of this is we're sharing information with you, but this is all meant to be a two-way street. You know, we welcome feedback and comments um, and anything we may have missed or anything that we should be thinking about because um, that really makes the best plan for everybody when it's an open conversation between everyone involved. Um, so the first thing we're going to work on doing is forming a steering committee. And this is where we're asking the people here and some of the people um, that weren't able to make it today, as well as those we haven't talked to yet, um, to be part of a steering committee. Um, and the steering committee is really just people who want to be a little bit deeper involved in the planning process, who want to kind of help shape the objectives and mold things and kind of represent their communities and the ideas to the people who can't make it um, to the watershed meetings. Um, and there'll definitely be representatives from the county in each of the communities um, as part of this. Um, but then we're also asking for anyone who wants to put in or is willing to put in a little bit of extra time to either put your name and email address in the chat and we'll add you to that list. Or if you email reduce runoff at save the sound.org, um, that comes to Katie and I, and we can, um, we'll add you to that list. Um, and it's not, it's not going to be a huge time commitment. We're essentially asking you to come to what breaks out to be um, four additional meetings throughout the planning process. And then um, we'll send out some of the draft documents for you to read and review and provide comment on if you're comfortable doing that. But it's really just um, looking for additional review and input. Um, and the steering committee meetings will probably be an hour to an hour and a half. And we'll set the date based on what works best for the greater group. Um, and then the next thing that's kind of coming up, um, and they should be scheduled shortly, are street walks. And those are exactly what the title suggests. It's a walk in the stream, but it really gives you the opportunity to view the river from the inside out. And that's what I really think is great about doing stream walks as part of the planning process. Um, as most people are familiar with um, kayaking a river or walking along, um, a path next to it, or even in this case, driving along the parkway. But it's not often that people stay stationary in a river and kind of look at the banks and look at the vegetation and think about the land use further out. So it's using um, a protocol that'll be guided by um, Sam Marquand, our water quality expert who couldn't make it tonight. Um, and he's really great to kind of listen to thinking about the river system from the inside out. And he's who's been doing um, work with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, but it really is a great opportunity to get your feet wet and inform the planning process. And honestly, it's just a nice way to spend a couple hours walking through the river. Um, and so again, if you're interested, um, we'll be sharing that information shortly or feel free to reach out to us. And then the next big community thing is hopefully by December, we will have taken all of this information that was shared with us tonight and really digested it and put it into a picture of what the watershed looks like now um, and kind of use that as our stepping stone for where we're going in the future. Um, and so hopefully in the next week or two, we will have a project website that is ready to go that'll be hosted at savethesound.org slash hutch plan. Um, and there is most likely going to be um, a common link also on the Westchester County website. So the information will be available from either point. Um, the Jamboard we will be keeping live through the end of October. So if you think about things um, between now and then or something you notice as you're driving by, um, that will be there as well. The interactive map is also going to be hosted on um, the, the Save the Sound slash Hutch Plan website, um, which is another great way to share any information you have. Um, and that'll be open a little bit longer. Um, the only reason we're picked the end of October is so that gives us time to kind of go back through and make sure that we're considering everything on the Jamboard before we move too far into the baseline assessment. Um, and then any comments or questions can be sent to reduce runoff at savethesound.org. And I'm sorry, this slide does have a lot of information crammed into it, but we will also be sharing the presentation. Um, so you have that information and can go back through it at your leisure. Thanks, Nicole. Yep, just like she said, we'll be sharing the slides themselves, but we've also been recording um, this whole presentation and we'll share that recording with you uh, within the next couple of weeks as well. So 
that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for sticking on. Um, Nicole and I will be um, staying on uh, here at this Zoom. If you want to hang out, ask more questions, talk more about the plan. Um, otherwise, we hope you have a, a great rest of your night. And just thank you so much for taking the time um, to be part of it. Uh, and thanks to those who've been doing this work on the Hutch um, for, for many, many years. We're really excited to be able to work with you all.